What you're about to listen to is my reaction to a story that's trending right now. Was an incident that happened on the 17th of July, 2022 in Oshogo, uh, Oshun State, Nigeria. All right. Um, in which a man got burnt to, I mean, set on fire in his home by his wife. Uh, I just want to say that my goal here is to point out a very important truth. This is an example of how women hurt fellow women. And many times they fail to see that that's what happens when people begin to respond, when women begin to respond. They think it's a case of us versus them. And you will see in the review I do, where I go through some of the comments of, some of, of one of the stories, that we, some women came in there to say that, and that's what shows that they are not mentally okay. And there are many women going around like that with that kind of warped sense of, real, uh, sense of reality. So women are hurting other women when they engage in inflicting violence on the men in their lives. Uh, not only do they hurt the mothers of those men, who are fellow women they also hurt the sisters and other female loved ones those men have and the truth of the matter is that the reason for which they even carry out the um, wicked action they take against the, the male partner quite often does not even justify the action they took and in this case for instance setting him on fire and killing him all of that is not justifiable by the fact that he supposedly cheated on her so i just wanted to start with that that's like a synopsis. Let's go into the story now. Chinyere Okonkwo is a clinical psychologist with Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba. And she says domestic violence is not gender-based. It can come from male, it can come from female. And it doesn't know age either. It can cut across all ages. Okay, um, I'm going to take you through this uh, newspaper. Oh, and I don't know what to call this now. Online newspaper review. And my goal here is simple. I continue to say it. That's why my hashtag or the label I use on my Twitter okay, account is domestic violence is not gender based. So this is an example. There are so many examples. So I'll be telling you two true stories. The first one is what you're looking at on your screen. This was the first website I got this news report from. Contrary to, uh, well, that's different from what happened in the past where people sent me the reports. This one I actually stumbled on it myself. I think it's really viral. It's just been off, just about 24 hours old, the story. Okay. Today is the uh, today is 22nd of um, yeah, today is 22nd of uh, July. So this happened on the this report was published on the July 21st, 2022 at 12.37 p.m. But the, the details were not so useful. You know, this is Paul's uh, this gentleman, as you can see there, burns. I've had hot water poured on me. I've had a lot of burns too, but not nothing resembling this. <laughs> this man was left in a house to burn, locked in there by his wife. Um, three months old marriage. So um, I will talk about the story when I get to the, the, the website that I think, the two other websites that I think gave me the full information. I just wanted you to take a look at this first report. I think journalists should, I think some, of, some people are lazy journalists. I'm not saying <laughs> this pause journalists, wherever they were, were lazy, but the information here is quite scanty. Um, Oshun State is where it happened. The police command, uh, PPRO, the public relations officer, gave a statement in which they acknowledged that they heard, uh, they were told, okay, they were given a report that this gentleman had his agreement his wife and, with his wife and the wife set him ablaze, locking him in the house. Okay, but you see, that was basically all that was said. Then they said maybe a family member spoke on condition of anonymity that there had been a disagreement. She accused him of um, having a baby outside. Well, not even baby now. That uh, the wife carried out her, their son, her sister living with the family was not in the house. She was outside looking for those that could settle the quarrel. The woman doused the husband who was already drunk and weak and the entire house with petrol and set it on fire. Blah blah blah. Uh, then she said she was suspecting her husband was having an affair after seeing a notification of a transfer made to someone on the phone on his phone Bol Bolu was a kind and generous human being who was always who always cared for people blah 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 now they didn't tell us what kind of work the guy did where he was based um, and there's some other details you are going to see that the other two websites provided okay so I, I it was because this information I saw on the website I first found the story from was not kind of uh, comprehensive enough that's why i went googling for more details and i did find more details so let's go to the daily trust website they had a little more information so the same title more or less um then um they talk about the police command again the same stuff the police said yes 
you know, I think, oh yeah, that's a year me see or All right, made the statement, you know, show book. Okay, uh, in case of attempted, what, what do you mean to attempt the mother? That the case of attempted mother was reported by, okay, well, so that time the man was alive. Okay, so he had been set ablaze. He was taken to the um, central hospital, Shogbo, uh, but then was referred to the UCU, UCH, sorry, University College Hospital in Baden. Oh my God, I wonder how long that would have taken to get him there. That probably was why he died. Uh, she said the police would ensure the woman was arrested, but unfortunately, the uh, okay, now uh, this is where I said there was extra information offered by Daily Trust. So she found out, according to them, after. Yeah, well, she was said to have reportedly found out that her husband cheated on her and had a child as her wedlock. All right. Again, we didn't have more details beyond that. But then they went on to say she left a message on her WhatsApp status indicating that her action was premeditated. This was when I knew that I got some more details from them. And what, the, what, what did she say on her WhatsApp status? Um, I'm going to read it out. It's also on the, on the third website I'm going to look at. Uh, she said... I've always been a calm girl and I've never done this in my life, but T-Bam, which is what she calls her husband, had pushed me to the edge. At this point, y'all will weep over myself and him before daybreak. I'm, pros- I'm promising you all that. Okay, now, that's what was reportedly on her WhatsApp status as of, I think, some hours before she carried out whatever it, the, the dastardly act she did. Now, on lindaikeji.com, that was where I now found not surprisingly, knowing what uh, Linda Ikeji does, the, uh, what I would consider the most comprehensive details about this event that took this terrible event. All right, so the same initial information is that her husband and blah, blah, blah. The Oshute police command made a statement, you know, they gave her full name, if you Bamdele, she said her husband, Bolu Bamdele, a blazing Oshogbo for allegedly having a child with another one. Now, you see now the details are coming out here. Now, the... Uh, well, <laughs> according to previous reports, you see, Linda has gotten some more insights for us. If Elua supposedly committed, committed suicide after setting the husband ablaze, possibly that's why she said in her WhatsApp status that you weep over myself and him. However, family members said they haven't seen any proof that she did so. So, the issue of committing suicide, that's the one now, because if she committed suicide, we need to see the body. So, the, where is she? She's at large right now. Now, the Yemisho Palatola statement is repeated here. Uh, she also mentioned that the incident started around 11.30 p.m. on Sunday, July 17th. Okay, so 20, today is 22nd, so I guess the news is just hitting the media outlets. This happened a while back in Bokun local government area of the state in their Koko community apartment. All right, so um, now I want to just get to the one where... Okay, it is unfortunate that the man eventually died around 4 p.m. on Tuesday. So you can imagine, you see, the, the thing started on July 17. July 17 was, um, let's see now, I'm trying to get the, the July 17. Sorry. Yes. That was, um, July 17 was Sunday. All right, now today is Friday. So the man died, uh, the incident, uh, what's that? Yeah, the incident happened on July 17. 17 he died on tuesday so it um july 17 was sunday all right then he died on tuesday uh you know when they said they moved him to um what's it called now Osho, uh, from Oshobo to ibado to uch i was saying that man even that distance and well i don't know but given the kind of bonds i saw on him and i don't know what the kind of treatment he got in between the kind of first aid he got only god knows what could have transpired at that point in time all right, so um, what else can I say here? She was reported to have left a message on WhatsApp since blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's the other. Okay, now there's a screenshot. Trust the KG blog. She has a screenshot showing the message, though it doesn't show the actual um, features of the person's WhatsApp status. So it could just be anybody that is. But we want to imagine that they did their due diligence and they know that this is from the right source. Okay, um, according to the Nigerian Tribune report, so now Lena Ikeji is quoting from Nigerian Tribune, which I didn't get to see. What I have is uh, this one is uh, Daily Trust and this one is The Pulse. So Nigerian Tribune is probably the original source. The disease fondly called T-Bam was a Cairo-based businessman 
and he returned from his base unannounced to Nigeria as a surprise to his wife. Wow. So it is, I think, that this they are quoting the reports. Okay, they are quoting the reports. The motive of the disease was to visit the country and celebrate the battery anniversary of his wife in a big way. But instead of the heroic reception from the wife, he was said to have been given a dirty slap with an accusation that he was not faithful in their marriage to the extent of having a bastard child out of the union, uh, outside the union. Uh, so they began arguing, uh, they threw their quarrel into the wind and engaged themselves in a war of words. Uh, the wife reportedly tried, I think, took her husband's phone to scan through, okay, given the fact that they said there was some transfer or whatever, uh, to verify whether or not the husband had been faithful. The husband was said to have resisted that. This infuriated the wife. She went berserk, saying she was justified since he wouldn't let her look at the phone. Uh, for fact finding, so she set him ablaze after locking him in the house and all the efforts in the, of the residence to, to save his life proved abortive as it took them hours before they could gain access to the house as a result of burglary. I mean, I'm just thinking of how she must have gone about this. Must have, definitely premeditated to have been able to get enough, I mean, petrol to start the fire that will keep burning and burning. I mean, you can see on the screen the, the extent of the burns. I. Uh, this is mad, man. It's crazy. I want to take a look at some of the comments just to. Uh, words fill me this horrible. Please catch her. She must not escape. So many cheating men on his blog. He pained them. God. I mean, this is amazing. This is one of the things I was thinking I would see and I've seen it. The fact that this has been done by somebody. We haven't verified whether the man did cheat or not. But even if he did cheat, there's nothing that justifies this. But here is somebody posting under the. Uh, ID of an anonymous uh, commenter saying so many cheating men on this blog he paid them off. This is madness. There are females that are sick in the head, walking the streets, and people do not know. And some of them are so beautiful, you think they are decent human beings, and they will kill you because they don't have the ability to control their emotions. That's the point. that's the theme of this particular video. I'm just doing it to. to I'm going to end by making a statement anyway. Uh, he said, this guy said, guy, you F up, you don't know who you marry, you lose God, you married a terrible woman, a street girl, imagine her saying, you all, you married a girl with her eyes on, I, I know she had temper, and she liked you, I feel grab, um, born together. Now I support polygamy. Men, tell your wife from day one, in case you go marry, you get Women are waking, oh my God, abuse her, she will abuse you, damage her, she will damage you. No more silence. The whole man said I'm living by a woman. Men are done. Woman, well done. No continuing the abuse. What is she talking about? Do you think someone is answering? Do you think women can actually harm men if men decide to start treating women and the fellow men? The same men that protect you, women. Well, I don't know if I should even bother. I'm divorced. I can't bear the nonsense, man. Okay, this is a woman. Responding, God punish you. I'm divorced because I can't bear the nonsense my husband was teaching me. Yes, I have two boys, and you are telling me it's all right to burn a man because he's cheating. Babes, if you can't take it, kindly quit. Same thing applies to men. Don't kill anyone because you didn't make them. Oh, God. He cheated on her. You should have left the marriage. Murder is not the equivalent of adultery, legal or moral. We are avenging. Exactly. You know, I think this is. Look, anyway, there's no point. Let me end this. Let me just go into my commentary. Okay. Now, I want to make a comment a few comments anyway about this report you see the reason why i decided to just run through if i was thinking i was going to showcase another story but i'm not going to this this one should start on its own as a, as a story and i'm not going to even bother with the other story it's a story of a lady that was killed by her husband look that happens all the time and i just wanted to put them side by side to say you know domestic violence is not gender based men kill their wives for ridiculous reasons and women do kill their husbands and spouses uh, for ridiculous reasons as well and neither party is ever justified in doing so it doesn't matter what kind of insult uh, humiliation disrespect so long so long as the person has not tried to inflict reverse bodily harm or on you or kill you there is no so you know in other words you are, you are acting in self-defense there's no justification for inflicting grievous bodily harm or injury on anybody talk less of even trying to kill the person now I want to say this we have a culture growing that we are borrowing from the west a culture of intolerance and a culture of a lack of discipline and when i say this i mean mental and emotional 
and psychological discipline and verbal discipline too the ability to control your emotions to exercise restraint not just in what you do but in what you say and how you say it i think we have a big problem uh, in nigerian society today with the growing influence of western uh, feminism in our society as i said we already know that men historically there's been the issue of men you know for whatever reason men are abusing their wives and all that but as i've told people a lot of change has come uh, about in which society has been able to influence the new generation of male persons we have many of them understand the need to be very uh to exercise a lot of self-control in relating with their female partners so compared to before we have quite a lot of men who are very sensitive to the need to avoid being unnecessarily aggressive towards members of the female gender but i'm telling you we have a growing number of women not only are they literal monsters walking the streets they are training their younger ones their children the ones the, the proteges or whatever they have the young females that they mentor or coach to be like that they actually lack the capacity to feel emotion to feel remorse that is why you can see some of the comments i am i i, I refuse to accept that a man will come and post pretending to be a woman it doesn't make any sense what sort of purpose does that serve so that's the lady hiding her identity of course then posting that it was justifiable for this woman to do what she did to her husband because supposedly he cheated on her so because he cheated on her therefore he deserves to die it, it, i don't see the fact that they can think like this shows what i'm saying this is the reason why we need to understand that there is a pandemic of domestic violence knocking on our doors as a society from america america in particular is the place where this madness is from and i'm telling you if we do not take time what is going to you can see there's one of the comments i read where the woman was saying she had two boys i am sure the woman is thinking so what if my son gets connected with this kind of crazy woman she's going to kill him because she suspects she didn't get the proof she was suspecting she wanted to check his phone he said no for a there could be a million reasons why he didn't want that even his own self-respect and dignity even his pride as a man could make him say no what, what's the what's the proof i was with somebody for over 20 years never one day did i step foot out and i was in another country i mean so and i never touched another woman yet this woman was able to accuse me at a point in our relationship that i went somewhere and my mouth was smelling of beer and that i had been with a woman and that night i came back walking for me for more than one hour back home because my car my tire had gone flat at a place at okwebi and i could not bring it home so i had to pack it at the organizer's place i didn't have money to pay i didn't have a spare things were bad for me at that time this was in 2008 i got home i think around maybe 1 a.m and what i got was that yes my mouth was smelling of beer i'd been out with a woman that was the only welcome i got i didn't beat her i never beat her and i didn't start shouting with her i simply saw that she was crazy and i went to sleep you know my point is we are in a society today where women feel because of what they are learning from the west because of the western style education and the impact of the western media or not they feel that they don't have to exercise self-control that is what i'm saying control over their mouths control over their uh their hands and whatever actions they feel they can do literally anything and they will get away with it why because the western society which we have chosen to borrow from has helped us to establish laws that give females protection from literally anything including having whatever they say believed at the expense of the man even if the man is telling the truth this is why i believe that we need to really come together as a society not men coming together men and women because the women are going to lose their sons if this continues you see the woman who is the mother to this bolu guy now has lost a son so whether she's a feminist or not she has lost her child that's the mistake the women make that's why the gender war makes no sense i tell people all the time this is a societal problem this is not a gender-based problem when a woman kills her husband she has killed a woman's child so when you are busy supporting that woman understand that if you have a male child or a male relative a male loved one 
it means that that person could also suffer the same fate. And at that time, you will be the one that will be the victim. You will then be the one that's lamenting and complaining. But when you are supporting another woman now who has done it, you fail to understand that people like that woman are walking the streets. They are a danger to society. Anybody that does not have the ability to exercise self-control is a danger to society, not just to themselves. And we need to begin as a society to talk about it. Domestic violence in any shape or form is completely inexcusable. Somebody cheated on you, so walk away. If you want to take him to court or her to court, take her to court. If you want to make a case for her to be locked up, take her to court. Get her prosecuted, get him prosecuted. There's no justification for you to take a life. There's no justification for you to inflict such bodily harm of any kind on anybody. But what we have today are these women who believe that they can do and undo because they know that at the end of the day, quite often, the law will side with them. I have seen cases, and we know in Nigeria, of cases of when the person, woman has done the crazy thing she has done to the man, then they say, oh, you know, she's the primary caregiver. If you, if you sentence her to jail now, she cannot take care of the children. You know, in America, that's, that's a joke on its own. I don't even want to talk about America. That's a, a place where men men are just being emasculated, you know, like it's like clockwork. But I'm just saying that if we really want to have change in our society, we better start now before we become like America. The family structure is going to be destroyed. And then we're going to have women who feel entitled to destroy men and who will get support to destroy men, even innocent men. Because the, even the guilty man, a man guilty of cheating is not... Is not that does not qualify him to become a candidate for murder, a candidate for for, for domestic violence. There's no there's no comparison. The Yorubas will say, won, you are comparing death with sleep." Well, I don't know. I hope this video will. will I, I hope this message I'm trying to pass across will hit home with some people, because there's no basis for you to take sides on this matter. It's not a case of men versus women. It makes no sense. Every time you say men are trash, you are talking about your brother. Your, your cousin, okay, your father, your uncle, you're talking about every male person you care for. Every time you say that, you cannot use a blanket statement to describe everybody. It's impossible. Just like women cannot be said to all be prostitutes. It doesn't make sense. Because of what this woman has done, and we cannot say all women are violent. No. So we need to understand it's individuals. And what I'm saying is that the individuals that are growing up today are growing up with a lack of the ability to exercise restraint and self-control. And we need to work on that. That's a function of parenting. It's a function of societal feedback. And we're doing a very bad job of it right now. Societal feedback is so poor right now. Corrective feedback, I mean. We're not correcting members of society because we're allowing ourselves due to the corruption that is pervasive across this culture we have in Nigeria. We are making it impossible for us to correct people to behave better. Because people no longer have moral courage to correct anybody. Because they've gotten their hands dirty, soiled their hands. And that's what's leading us to have a society in which people are just behaving like wild animals. Because there's no difference between you and a wild animal when you can no longer exercise restraint. I hope, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. And I hope you please try and spread the word and also act based on these uh, um, suggestions I've made. Because honestly, if we keep going like this, uh, we're going to get to a point where people refuse to get married. I believe right now that the rate at which we are going, men are becoming the victims. Yes, I agree. Women are, you know, women are being beaten up and all that. But even that is a function of what women are doing. Because there's that issue too. There's a, there's a video I'm going to review. After this one, I'm going to react to the video. I think it was a skit by a, a woman and a man. I think they were both husband and wife. And they were passing that message about how women provoke their husbands. And that is consistent with what um, those who have been following me know about Professor Amanda Banks, uh, investor of West London. What she said reportedly, according to one of the Nigerian, Nigerian born psychiatrists based in London who attended her program. Okay, he was attending the course on family intervention therapy. And she said that about the fact that a lot of the domestic violence we see is actually the result of years of verbal and psychological abuse and emotional abuse of the man in the home by the wife. At which point, at some point, we now got to a point where he, he couldn't take it anymore. And then when he reacted, it led to maybe the violence of the woman, physical, physically manifesting violence. And at which point then the whole world got to know there was a problem. So then the man will be the one that goes into the spotlight for being abusive. But the woman has actually been subjecting him to abuse all the while. So Amanda Banks was saying that quite often men have been the real victims of abuse. 
you see because he has been on the receiving end of the hidden form of abuse which is actually more devastating than the physical one in its impact and more longer lasting as well so what these people are dramatizing in their skit was a reflection of that which a lot of times society ignores and we need to pay more attention to it having said that we're talking about a woman here all the things she said her husband did what exactly did he do he didn't beat her clearly because if he had definitely the world would have known about it so because maybe he supposedly had a baby out outside outside out of wedlock and so she chose to kill him it makes no sense and we need to understand that this has to stop the only way it's going to stop is if we begin to talk about it we begin to speak out against it and we begin to teach our young ones to understand that they must manage their emotions properly that's the sign of it of a f- normal functioning human being the ability to exercise control over your emotions if not you are no different from a wild animal you just lash out on instinct that makes no sense you are not human anymore if you behave like that <sighs> i wish you well okay so it's important to begin to pick observe be observant with people around you know when there are behavior changes that are quite inappropriate and could signal problem according to her there are signs spouses should look out for somebody who has problem with controlling his emotion anger emotion okay that person can be prone okay somebody who has uh overbearing character you know if you have such a person around you 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 know that there is tendency manslaughter and murder are offenses against the state and while the penalty for manslaughter is not more than 21 years in prison murder attracts life in prison ivy kano tvc news lagos